Well, hello, welcome to Jim's Radio Shop. I'm continuing uh, work. This is, I think, my second video on this Phillips. Very old, 1932. 1932. Uh, believe it or not, AM radio. That's a really big beast. So what I'm going to do, um, I've done the preliminary check over. Things look pretty good, actually. And I heard that the owner knows the tubes light up. Okay, so that means he's plugged it in. So what I'm going to do is, I'm not going to plug it in. I'm going to try to energize the high voltage circuitry from a separate power supply. From this guy right here. Okay, and I'll be able to dial up the voltage and watch the current. And then let me know if the high voltage circuitry in the, in the radio is safe to operate. And it shouldn't take too long to do this. I spent about an hour last night studying the circuit diagram. Um, it's a pretty old radio. Uh, but engineers were clever back then too, and so there's a fair bit of that circuitry I really don't fully understand. I'm not going to kid you, I'm, I'm not a super genius on this stuff. Okay, so these are the leads that I will use. And I just have to find the right connection point. Now, perhaps grounding to the chassis is a good idea. The easiest thing to do is just get on one of the, one of the filter capacitors. And, uh, appears to be this guy up here. Mm, there's quite a few of them. One. And there's two down here. Ah, maybe we can just identify it on the circuit diagram. It'll feel a little better. That's a 10 millifarad. And this one here. Doesn't seem to have any name on that one or number. Hmm. Hmm. They don't look like they've ever been replaced. So, 10, 10 millifarads. 10 millifarads on the diagram here. You know, they drew these a little differently, of course, back then. Uh, they really aren't labeling. Again, they really aren't labeling. Uh, okay, let's try a different approach. The uh, number 80 is the rectifier tube. Maybe we can spot. There they are, there. 35 and 57. Number 35. Oh, my photocopy's not very good. Fixed condensers, 35. Ooh. 57, those are tiny. These are all tiny capacitors here. Maybe I'm not reading these right. Hmm. Don't really want to make a mistake here. Their best bet is right off the uh, rectifier. The center tap off the transformer. Here it is. I'll try to... That number of the choke coil is... Uh, Job. Okay, we'll have to do a little bit of circuit tracing and identifying here before we do this. Let's see what we got. So the uh, the number 82 is probably very close to the... Here's the big power supply, so the, the number 80 is going to be... It's probably that guy there. No, the 
tubes are so dirty. Well, this looks like a pair of output tubes and push pull. And they're close to the power transformer, that makes sense. This guy is a loose glass bulb. Definitely, this is all IF and RF. Is that guy the 80? Wait a minute. We have a tube back on. That's right. We don't need to fuss. Okay, I was a little wrong about the two output tubes. They're actually there and there, and that's the number 80. The number 80 then would be this guy right here. So that's the main high voltage rectifier tube. And there's the leads going to it. Two of them are uh, heater. Two of them will be the high voltage. And then off of that goes this guy right into one of those capacitors. So, so this is the high voltage point here. Picking a good ground for this, and we'll probably use the chassis as the ground. Be nice if I could spot that. So I think we know enough. It's a variable power supply. I can go easy on it. Okay, so we'll put the negative one here. <coughs> we'll put the positive right there. Now the excitement really takes place on the instrument, not on the. Uh, <laughs> not the Let's watch what happens here. Put her on standby. Make sure controls are down. Put this into the right connection. The meter is switched for voltage output. There's a vacuum tube inside here, so we have to let this guy warm up a little bit. But what we're hoping to see is I can raise the voltage but the current barely moves. If the opposite happens, I, tart, I can't really raise the voltage and the current is going up. Then we know there's some short circuits in there and we should not operate that set. What we don't want to do is put this big transformer at risk because if that's blown, then, well, unless you can get another one of those radios, I think you're done. So this should be warmed up now. So voltage down, switch on, and here we go. So this guy, it's 200 volts straight up in case you can't read the uh, supply, the, the numbers. And this is 75 milliamps straight up. So here we go. Now there's bound to be some current flow as it charges up capacitors. So we're up to 100 volts, and uh, it's not too bad. Let's take her up. Okay, we're at 200 volts, and 25 milliamps. So what would that be in terms of watts? 25 milliamps is a quarter of a tenth of an amp. It's not much. I don't think it's much at all. Take another look at the radio. No funny sounds. holding fairly steady. If anything, it's, it's sinking a bit. 
Now, a lot of people will tell you that uh, electrolytic capacitors, those big filter capacitors, can degrade over time and you can bring them back to life by simply applying a voltage. And there might be some truth in that, because there's so much discussion about it. My personal point of view is capacitors are so cheap. If there's any doubt about the uh, existing capacitors, might as well replace them. I mean, there's nothing to it. Why, uh, why, why try to bring an old one back to life? I guess some people want these radios to be, uh, to have, uh, you know, original parts. Uh, I guess I can understand that a little bit. My own view is the radio is the circuit. The parts that are in the circuit don't matter that much, really. What makes this radio interesting is the circuit that was designed for it. So this is really what you want to maintain. It's, it's the circuit design that has the history in it, not so much the components, in my view. And look, a bunch of them have been changed already. Well, there's something a little interesting. You know, the longer you look, the more you see. Okay, a couple interesting things there. And the magnifier's in the other room. Not the time magnifier here. I might have to run around the house for it, so... If I could pause my camera, I would, but I can't, so... Hold the line. is dropping ever so slightly. It's a good sign. Going up, going down. Right on 25 milliamps now. But here's what I just noticed while we're looking at this. Get my light a little better here. Well, that's a connection to nothing. Spiderweb. Sometimes I can see better with my camera. See that that's all cracked in there. Well, that's probably a resistor. That's a pretty new capacitor right beside it there, that one. There's so few parts, electronic parts in here, that it's probably worthwhile to consider replacing them all. Just cut them out and replace them all. Um, I have the circuit diagram. I'm pretty sure it's the correct circuit diagram, so I should be able to. Uh, this, this looks pretty crummy in here too. What, what's going on down in here? Uh, looks like some crummy workmanship or something in there. I'm going to keep my fingers out. There's 200 volts flowing down this thing. Okay. Sorry for all the shape. It's a little awkward for me to, to see everything and hold everything. How are we doing there? Okay, we're at 25 milliamps. Let's take it up to a little higher voltage. Take it up to... We're at 250 now. Take it up to 300. It's probably around the voltage it runs at. 50 milliamps at 300 volts. Now that, that's getting to be a fair bit of power. Okay, another test we can do. Oh, no, it's not worth doing. I was going to say it was uh, you release the voltage and see if it holds in the radio the charge stays. It's not going to stay on this one, not with that kind of current drain. Well, that's the end of this test. I think uh, that's a good sign. The next thing we'll be doing is uh, we may disconnect, if we can do it easy, we disconnect the uh, power supply from the radio and run the power supply only. You have to consider that. Everything is so fragile. The more I do, the more risk 
I take in introducing problems, which is not at all the idea. So thanks for watching, and see you soon.